Boom! We are live, baby. Matt, what is going on, my friend? What's up, man? Another day in paradise here. Another day in paradise here. Another day in paradise. Dude, uh, this is actually the first show back from um, from EXPCon in New Orleans. And so I'm really excited. Um, you are one of the the people I met down there and connected with and and, and built a relationship with. So I, I'm excited to get you on and, and, and kind of get your story. And and um, so why don't we do this? Um, just real quick, I never spend a lot of time on um, on agents telling me about their business, but just enough so that like when we talked before we went on air here, um, just enough so that you know somebody out there listening uh, might be able to connect with you. Um, I know you're a Remax guy, but tell me, kind of tell me, answer the question. You know how you got into the business, how long you've been in the business, and then we'll talk kind of about the backstory uh, of you being at Remax. Yeah, man. So, um, so I got, um, I got into the business in 2001. That's when I took the class. I got the class. I got a little bit about real estate. And uh, I guess in about, I, I'd say within two years, I started my first with that real estate, my career, you know, quick, you know, quick, you know, and then eventually uh, I built a team in and followed the way through that. And they built the 100 years ago. Cool, man. So you. You've been doing it for a little while now. You've been in the game for a little while. You've seen the ebbs and flows of the marketplace and you've learned um, all those lessons that we learn as real estate agents and growing a team and a business, especially. Um, how did you, what did, did you do anything before real estate or was real estate kind of your first professional endeavor? Uh, you know, I was, I was good at hands-on work, construction, um, I worked at a plastics factory down here. I actually moved to, to my area. I moved three hours away from home in New Jersey. Um, okay. And I ended up getting down here because I wanted to be in uh, engineering, architecture. Uh, okay. I hated it because I could never get my hands on the job. And you were kind of just locked at a computer. Um, but then I eventually was landscaping, bartending. And I'd say bartending was the people skill side of it. And then I learned about real estate, you know, to try to start building it. And then that was my first sales job, you know, and then it, it clicked with me to just sit back and be like, you know, I don't have to cut grass or, you know, mulch yards until nine o'clock at night when I can just pick up this phone and make some calls and all of a sudden people need help. And that was much easier to me. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you're, I mean, you're no joke, man. I mean, you're one of the top real estate agents in, in the entire state of New Jersey, uh, you're in the Remax Hall of Fame. You guys are selling over a hundred houses every year. When did it finally click for you, man? Like you, you know, obviously you started in 2001. When did it finally click for you that that um, you could build a business, that you could build um, a team that would um, that would support your that would support your lifestyle, that that you could support their lifestyle, that you could go out and create this amazing life for yourself. So I guess. Um Within a few years, I was selling, uh, I'd say about 40 units, um, which is great when you're in your 20s, single, all that, you know, early 20s. Um, I learned how to hustle right away. I worked well with investors um, because I was, you know, handy and I could see stuff uh, that, that would appeal to investors and help them, you know, crunch their numbers. And then yeah. we grew, I guess my real estate business evolved, right? As most of us do, it started buyer side, then grew into listing side. And then I kept being told to build a team um, and you know, eventually broke down and did that. I was against it initially because I didn't want to really manage people. Um, but you know, since then, you know, again, 2010, I think we went individually. I think the year before was around 50 deals. Then as a team, we went to 80, then started breaking a hundred, you know, year after year. And, you know, building a team and going through the ups and downs of teams and profit and, you know, keeping it profitable and everything. So, so. Got it. So what does your team look like today in 2000, in November, 2018? All right. So today, um, well, with EXP, the, the merge kind of um, moving to EXP shifted everything, right? I yep. started seeing an opportunity um, and I felt very limited at Remax based on the costs for the teams they're not not it wasn't team 
friendly where I was, right? There was not many brokers. Uh, I, I was with the same broker the whole time, but at the end of the day, there's only a couple brokers around here and they all charge similar numbers. And it was just harder for me to build my team there because of the fee structure. Um, yeah. So as I went over the EXP model, I've now grown my team to, I think about seven or eight people, um, half are full time. And, you know, I'm basically growing from the ground up, right? And I also had to, had to end that 17 year relationship with that brokerage and kind of move my way over. So my opinion on rebuilding now, and with this model, there's so many opportunities. And it's just, we're constantly, why we're on the phone today, about a half hour with somebody saying, you know, we could shift this model to do this on, on our team because there's so many different types of agents that are in this business that I wasn't able to help before. You know, I was always full-time only, got to be in the office and all that stuff. And now with the cloud and everything else with EXP, it's just, it's helping my business. Yeah. So, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because I won't get into specific expenses, although I want to touch on that a little bit because um, I can just give you some examples in my area. Um, I'm a former Keller Williams agent. We moved over from Keller Williams, but Remax was um, was a company that we considered. Uh, I, I think the the really the chink in the armor when you talk about a company like Remax, at least from my perspective in our area, was the fact that although the commission split was high, um, you got the value from Remax was really in the name. So if you if you are an agent that believes that um, your broker the name of your brokerage. Uh, is an important component of your business, then maybe Remax is something that you would consider. But that wasn't really the, the 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 main reason why we didn't choose Remax moving forward. We chose Keller Williams over Remax because when you get up into selling 100, 200, 300, 400 homes a year, um, even if you're just looking at paying, a, let's just say a 5% uh, royalty fee into the, into, uh, to the Remax corporate office in Denver, um, you start looking at those numbers and you can easily hit uh, 40, 50, 60, $70,000 in royalty fees uh, pretty quickly. And so for us, we loved the idea, Matt, of having the cap, right? And, and in our in our area here, we paid a $21,000 cap uh, to Keller Williams and a $4,000 royalty or excuse me, a $3,000 royalty for a total of $24,000. And that is why um, when EXP came along and we were considering our move um, uh, three years later after being at Keller to EXP, that this model was so appealing. And I don't I don't want to give the the audience um, I don't want to give them the impression that it's all about the money. And you and I are going to discuss all the advantages and benefits that we've gotten just from you know being a part uh, of this company. But did that play into your decision at all? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the cost at the end of the year. So my cost, I mean, each year that I ran the team was getting, it was, I think I crossed six figures a few times. And when I say cost, I mean, you know, per agent that I had to pay um, and the 6% royalty on top, five point whatever it was, you know, I, I call it six. But, you know, every year I always look at that number. And as it, as I watched the business and tracked it, the question was always, what is the brand providing to me? And when you look at the sales and can go back and say, well, it's not from their website. It's not generated through their commercials or whatever else is coming. It's my repeat business. And I'm helping, you know, the team through other sources, you know, lead platforms and things like that. At my cost, you know, it started crossing six figures and I was like, this is just too expensive. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it definitely was a little part of it, but you know, I always looked at, um, Keller was the next closest, and it, it was very close as well. Yeah. So, so let so let's talk about let's get into like your story, man. So obviously you were at Remax. You were a, you were a long. I mean, you were there for for quite a quite a few years, and and you you find out what was it for you um, where you know you found out about EXP. Tell so tell that story about. <laughs> Went from being really happy and making great money at Remax and everything's going along great. You're building this wonderful team to um, you hear this idea, right, about this company. Um, agents are moving over and, and I'm going to let you take it from there. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, 
I mean, I was literally, I tell everybody, I was on my way to a bank owned for, I think it was just an inspection or something. And I'm in the, the Kinder Reese mastermind and all that. So Albie Stasek was, you know, an independent broker. So all of a sudden I see something on my Facebook or somehow I saw an announcement from him saying EXP. So I just Googled it right away. I found a video and I just listened to two or three videos and I was like, wait a second. I know Al and he's always, he was at Remax. I, I know he evaluated Keller. Um, and I know that he was a big independent you know, person just to say, you know, go independent. That's the way, you know, you, you don't need the brand. And then when I saw this switch, I was like, I need to learn about this because he's really smart. And I know he ran it past, you know, some other really smart guys. Um, and then I started evaluating, you know, I'm getting to a point in my career where I'm helping people more, you know, on my team and everything, helping them build their businesses. And, you know, looking at the future of saying, what if I don't just sell real estate, what is there left? And, you know, as I learned more about the ESP model and saw the opportunity, you know, it was, it was night and day. So, so I just started moving my business towards it and, and evaluating every single thing. And there, it's, it's just a no brainer once you see it. So, so talk to me about when you, so when you heard about it, and you started doing the research, right? And you saw that some of the people, um, some of the smartest minds in, in our industry um, were moving. How long did it take you from the time you heard about it until you actually made the move? Um, so I want to say about seven or eight months. Seven okay. or eight weeks? Months. Months, okay. Yeah, yeah. so I heard about it before uh, we had a mastermind meeting, I think in November every year. So then we had that meeting um, and that's where we met some ESG people that did a, a little bit of a presentation. Um, that was after, you know, I was, I, I watched online stuff. And then I just started looking at my business um, and just crunching numbers. And I went to my broker because we, you know, we, I, I was his, you know, the, the, I think the last guy that was still in the company from when he was, you know, basically a year or two old. And, you know, I brought it to him and I said, I think this might be an opportunity. Um, versus me buying a brokerage, building that Curcio real estate, you know, buying a different franchise. And, you know, so that's what I weighed over time. And then eventually um, I also had to worry about my business, right? I had listings, I had sales and, and volume. And I actually had my one of the best first quarters I ever had this year, um, which led to, you know, staying a little bit longer, you know, once I truly made the decision. And then I yeah. just gave, gave a... Uh, 30 or 60 day notice and, you know, set up my shop, which, you know, that also affected everything too. I had to find a place, get space and all that stuff. So. Yeah. So seven or eight months is it, that's a, I mean, you did your due diligence for sure. Um, and I'm assuming then based on seven or eight months, you heard about the idea and maybe it wasn't like, uh, yeah, I'm all in on this, uh, but maybe more so I'm going to continue to do my research on this. Uh, this is a big decision for me. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I was, I started at that brokerage. So 17 years, the same broker open, helped open multiple locations. You know, I was the first guy, you know, almost each office that we opened. And, then, and so it was a tough decision personally too, not just professionally. Right. Cause we always yeah. look at numbers and oh, if it's a little bit more, is it really worth it? And, and then, I, so I had to go through that whole um, thought process. So it sounds like, um, as you found out more about the idea and then maybe started to accept the idea that you took the idea then to your broker, uh, was that the, was that, is that your Remax owner? Yep. Yep. And you presented the idea to him and, and, and what was the response there? Well, he had positive and negative, you know, he had friends that are looking at it, you know, cause you know, they always evaluate uh, other companies in the competition. Um, and then, you know, basically we sat down, had a few discussions about could we make things work? Could we shift the numbers that I'm seeing, right, versus what, what their charges were? And we had a few discussions, but ultimately, I, you know, I decided there wasn't enough opportunity where I was. Uh, and enough future-wise, my biggest thing was opportunity for the future, right? Yeah. And, and once you look at this organization, there, there's nothing that compares to it. Yeah. You know, that's interesting, man. You are the first person that I've heard that has actually 
taken the opportunity to their broker or owner. And um, I, I've, I've, I've heard, you know, stories of, you know, that transition um, being a difficult one. In other words, they, they, they decided that they were moving their business and then, and then, and then approached their broker with the move and, and it wasn't received very well. And so for you, you thought, or this is what I'm thinking anyway, is you, you saw such a great opportunity that you felt like you would be doing your broker owner a disservice if you didn't share it with him. Exactly. And, and we just had a presentation here in, in Jersey and Philadelphia. And, and I said that to the room. I said, you know, um, you owe it to your family. If you're a salesperson, a broker, you owe it to your family to investigate what this company has to offer um, for, for their future. You know, yeah. there are a lot of realtors that are still realtors, one foot in the grave. <laughs> and you know it's a shame what we need, what this industry has set up for us um what this company has to fix for that yeah and you're only as good as your next transaction right when when you're in the business of just doing transactions and and you don't have any other income to rely on you're only as good as your last transaction every day you wake up unemployed yeah and yep. and so that you know that is a great segue i think into well let me go back to one more thing uh, before I, I transition into actually talking about EXP. Um, how did you, you know, you, so you built this team out, right? And you you decided then you approached your broker owner um, about EXP, and then was the approach then were you were you like, I, dude, I'm making the move, man. You can come with me, uh, but I'm definitely going. Or was it more like, hey? You know, I'm I'm putting this out there. This is something you might want to look at, and then um, and then you just made the move. How did that How did that go down? I mean, it was initially because of the future, right? Because a yeah. lot of the brokers around here are getting to the age where they're selling companies, and I know that was in his mind to sell. Or you know, I'm, there's a lot of uh, like I said, local brokers are at that age where they're just resolving, right? And, you know, yeah, HHS just swallowed up a big company, and I. I know that he's got an end game. And again, I looked at it and it was kind of like a, hey man, I want you to see this and tell me where it's wrong, right? If I'm making, if I'm jumping off a cliff here, you let me know your opinion. And, you know, there wasn't enough rejection, you know, valid rejection um, and future opportunity at the company that I was at. So it was kind of a little bit of both, I'd say. You know, like, hey, check this out with me. Not that he would have dissolved this company and, and threw everything over, but like, hey, if there's ever, you know, we could do this together in the future if you ever look at it. Um, but I really think it's an opportunity. And again, I value his opinion. He was a mentor for 17 years of my career. Okay. And so, so when you, when you peeled away, like when you made the determination to leave, uh, did you leave on good terms or do you, I mean, do you still have a friendship there? Um, I, I'd say it, it didn't go the um, and I'll just leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> it didn't go the way that I thought, but, but you know, uh, you know, business is business, and at the end of the day, uh, it is what it is, and any losses will be recouped, and, you know, whatever. Okay. So, yeah. so you made that jump, man, and and you are here, and and obviously that's how we got connected. Um, and, and so, uh, what was you know you. You you make different decisions when you hold um, other people's lives um, in a high regard because when you're a team leader, you obviously it's you're making different decisions when you're leading a team than when you're a solo agent. And and so when you make a decision to move your real estate team from Remax to EXP, um, what is the thought process that you had to go through um, for? for yourself as a team leader? Well, just the model, right? Because I never worked with a company with a cap before. It was fee-based and there was a minimum that I had to you know, deal with, a minimum on a monthly basis that I had to pay for each head underneath me. Um, and then how was I gonna grow my team and what would it look like under this uh, model versus the last? So I had to dial that all in and had a lot of conversations with different teams and you know, guys that had switched their companies over. And, um, you know, I'd say I overthought it, you know, at the beginning and then with enough conversation, it was pretty simple. Just like, oh, man, this is the way you do it. Don't don't confuse yourself. You know, and I was I actually had that conversation with somebody today who was going to, you know, now bring their team on and, you know, 
kind of overthinking all the little intricacies, like, you know, the, the 6% falls into, you know, the equation for some of those companies that have uh, a royalty fee and, you know, just all the little, the little detail, I'd say. So um, that was probably the longest process was trying to figure out the structure. Um, but now, I mean, growth is just, I'm able to grow so much faster here. What do you think it meant to your team, Matt? Um, what, what, and, and you and I, we know the answer, but our audience doesn't, or at least some of them don't. What did the switch mean to your team? You know, I guess I presented, I sat down, I guess I brought everybody to my house at the time and we sat down and watched a webinar about it and everybody was just enthusiastic. And, you know, then they had the questions on the splits and what would change and all that stuff. But yeah. the opportunity that was there, you know, we just had someone with their closing uh, first or second closing a couple of weeks ago. And they were like, oh, wait, we get this too? You know, and I was like, yeah, just because you're on the team doesn't mean you don't get everything here, you know. And, um, you know, it's just different now, you know. And especially with the being able to grow off your team. And, and still, you know, be part of the rev share group and all that stuff. Yeah. Was, you know, last year, over the last, I guess, all the years I've been, you know, uh, having team members, there's been times when you lose them, right? You lose a team member. They they think they can do it a little bit differently. You know, they want to do it their way. They're going to have leads to handle their own business. And, you know, they're not totally wrong, right? And yeah. what was wrong, what hurt was the fact that, the broker, most brokers will have an open arm to them and say, "Hey, thanks for training them. We're gonna we're gonna leave them here, you know, and and give them their own little deal. And you know, what do what do we get for all those efforts, you know? So as a team leader looking at that here, you know, that was another little incentive. Um, and you know, telling these agents that now, where I'm like, yeah, I don't I don't need you to stay on my team. You know, I'll train you up. You learn it. You know, you're welcome to stay. And you know, we have process, transaction management, all that stuff involved on the team for a fair fee. But if you feel you can handle that stuff, go off and do your own thing. We'll still support you. Yeah. And, and I'd say that's one of the biggest things here is um, I had a guy in here on Monday and he had asked me, he said, look, I don't know if I want the team. And he's been an agent uh, three years or something. And he does, you know, a certain amount of deals. And I was like, I don't know if you'd fit the team, you know, yeah. but he said, but will, will you still help me? I said, absolutely, I need you to sell, you know, and I need you to, you know, I want you to sell and I want you to be successful because that's the only way we can still grow this, you know, in the future. And I don't see a stop to this company. So we want everybody yeah. to succeed. And it, I, I want everybody to realize because, like, it seems to me that sometimes the confusion is in the semantics. And so when you talk about, like, we always talked about profit share at Keller Williams. And, and it was the profit share piece was it never meant that much to me um, because the, the reality of profit share is like, you know, the people that clean the office are getting paid before profit share is being paid. You know what I mean? And, and that so that was kind of the breakdown where um, most of the people that that made money through Keller Williams profit share were the people that were the early adopters. Right. And and so that really changed when we made the move to, to, to EXP because of the revenue share model in that if you can communicate that effectively to your team, right? So if you bring on 10 agents that sell $2.6 million in real estate, um, you're going to make an extra $28,000 a year. And like, I don't know about you, but um, that is like, that is a game changer for a lot of people. I mean, that's pay you're talking about paying um, mortgage payments. You're talking about paying car payments. You're talking about paying. Um, you're talking about paying college. I mean, college for your kids. You know what I mean? You're. you're th that's life changing money. And so, I, I really want people to understand the gravity of what revenue share is. How are you able to communicate that to your team? Um. um you know. I, you know. I, we had a girl. We had a girl. With a couple of people, uh, local uh, brokers, uh, local uh, local uh, uh, I brought them on. So I brought a guy on that was new, and she's like, Matt, he really needs help. He's just kind of floundering. 
on this team that shut down. So we brought him in. Um, he eventually, I mean, within 60 days, he had a closing set up. And, you know, I was like, hey, do you know you get, I said, you know, you're getting earning stock here and you're going to get a piece of that commission. It was a very small deal. And I was like, I was like, did you know that? And she's like, no, I had no idea. I said, yeah, that's the whole point here. I said, you can build. I said, you get five people, you know, and that becomes life changing. And I shot a video a few months ago, and, and what I said was, um, it was because as you, when you join, you're not going to see revenue share for a little bit because the people underneath you will have to join and then get their deal done, right? And you know, you know, the first first month was small, a few hundred dollars. Second month would have paid my my monthly Remax bill. Third month was even more than that, and it's like, you know, when you say the mortgage payment, it, last month would have covered my mortgage payment. You know, and that consistent it goes up and down with the amount of sales and everybody in the downline, but it's pretty consistent once you start having, you know, more than ten people on. And when you yeah. use that number that twenty eight thousand, yeah, that's life changing. Your car payment to most people to not have a car payment is life changing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree. And you know, that that wasn't it wasn't the reason why we moved again, um, because we're we're doing the exact same thing. Um at EXP that we did at Keller Williams. And our our clients don't know the difference because um, we've built our business so that um, so that we can still communicate our, our our unique selling proposition in the same way, right? And we 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 are a client service-based business and nothing has changed about that. And I don't want to give the idea that if you join EXP, you're, you're, then that become your, your, your main role becomes then to be a recruiter, right? right. It's not about that at all. Yeah. Um, in fact, I, I don't know, I, I've, not, I've never sat down consecutive days and, and just made phone call after phone call to agents I don't even know, um, asking them to join EXP. Um, I, I, I would make a phone call to an agent that I had developed a relationship with who I thought should hear about the idea, much like you did with your broker owner. Um, but you know, the rest of what we're doing really is just putting the idea or the model out there of what EXP actually is. And then people are flocking to the company in droves, right? I mean, we're, when we were down at EXP Con, I think they, they, they said there was uh, roughly like 250 agents a week in onboarding. It was some ridiculous number, and, um, and and we're just getting started with only fifteen thousand agents. So let me ask you this, brother. Um, you guys, obviously, how long have you been in now? You've been at EXP for how long? Uh, I think I'm starting my six months of production. All right, so you're six months in. I mean, you guys, the dust has settled for your business. Like, what's next for you? Um, so, so I'm going to talk about the rep share for a sec. So the rep share thing, I agree with you where it does not have to be your focus because a lot of people um, and a lot, you know, some of the other companies are, are saying using that to the negative, right? So what I tell every agent is don't focus on rep share. Your job is to do transactions and transactions will lead to conversations and everybody's asking about this company. It's, yeah. I mean, I want to say every other day I'm getting a conversation. I took three calls today. You know, Matt, can, I have a question about this new company you have. And it's not, EXP isn't really big here, okay? Um, but we're having that conversation. But I tell everybody to evaluate the whole thing and figure out what works best for you, right. you know? Um, so, you know, I guess back to uh, where I am right now. So right now we're, um, I just capped. So, um, Congrats. Yeah, thank you. And so you're going to 100 right? 100 commission. Yep, we're we're up to 100 commission now. Um, and that's pers that's personal, right? So obviously, I came in with a couple months, you know, basically starting over almost. And then we got this board here that shows I have two deals done out of the next 20, where I'll earn icon. And we got uh, up there; those are all going to closing. So what's that? Three, six, 10, 11, 12 deals. So I got um, six more deals in six months, yeah. and then I get awarded sixteen thousand dollars in in company stock. So, you know that that's the goal um, for me. You know, as, as my as being a team leader and being in sales, that's my goal every year to hit icon status, and then to help each team member underneath me grow their business 
uh, and enjoy real estate versus, um, you know, get out of the business. I don't want to see a whole lot of agents get out of the business because because uh, the training's not there and all, you know, all the faults that the industry has. Yep. And so so for those of you who don't know uh, what icon status is, is Matt, Matt's talking about um, when you've when you cap and you've paid in your uh, $16,000 cap, right? which essentially is a, a, a $16,000 savings plan because you're getting $16,000 back in company stock. Then you have, um, you do, uh, is it, is it 20 transactions at 250 bucks? And yep. then, and then, and then they, do, they magically deliver into your account $16,000 worth of company stock. Yep. And that is every year folks. That is not just year one, every year that you cap, and 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 then you hit icon status you get sixteen thousand dollars in expi stock that's trading right now uh roughly 12 13 bucks a share right and so like you know we talk about you know we talk about real estate agents and and i know a lot of them and i'm sure you do too man you're in jersey we have roughly four thousand agents in our local market and then another seven thousand probably in cincinnati but I don't know a lot of them, brother, that have uh, any kind of a stock plan or any kind of a revenue share or passive income plan. Some of them, most of them don't even buy rental property. But um, I, I want people to understand the importance of being, uh, of, of having some sort of a passive income strategy in place because, you know, you don't want to sell real estate for the rest. You don't want to be 85 years old showing buyers houses. You know what I mean? You, you, that's not the life you want. And so you have such a big opportunity right now through EXP that if you help grow this company, then you're going to be rewarded for that for the rest of your life. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, that's that's a pretty powerful thing. So, uh, so like for you guys, man, you... <sighs> You know, you're. How are you spreading the word now? How are you? How are you telling the EXP story, um, and 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 making sure that the people that you've built relationships with uh, are 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 understanding what what you're telling them? So, uh, so uh, a couple different ways. Different ways. Different ways. Different ways. Again, I tell I tell based on the rev share, the recruiting side. Um, but I asked them if they've heard of it because, again, I'm, I'm the only one in the state with actually a branch office here right now. Um, okay. And one of the first few down in my half of New Jersey. And so I, I tell them, do your research. And I also ask, you know, I use my story. So I left seven, 17 years with a, with a broker. And guess what I left with? Zero. Yeah. You know, I had my listing inventory that – you know, wasn't really given to me, you know, up front, you know, you got to kind of ham and haul over deals. Um, so I left after 17 years, that's almost a career, you know, 20 years in some jobs is like a career. There's some retirement yeah. set up. And you know, I had a buddy that left Sherman Williams after a 20 year, you know, 20 years of being at the company and the stock that he was awarded was, you know, six figures. And I was like, man, that, that would be great to have to leave. And, you know, now I look at this company and we have the icon program, which will be a goal. Um, then I tell them about the revenue share. If you want to introduce the company, which you're going to get asked about the company. Um, so and, and back to, you know, we get taught to buy rental property and stuff like that. Um, one person that sells two point six million dollars worth of real estate. Right. That's worth twenty eight hundred dollars. If you net out. What an average rental, what you'll make, twenty eight hundred dollars for one person isn't going to be telling you the toilet flow. Yeah. You know? not, not yeah, not to mention, yeah, you're not getting a call at three in the morning, right? Yeah, yeah. To, to 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 unclog a toilet and and you're not you're not dealing with vacancies, you're not dealing with repairs, you're not dealing with any of that, any of that headache. Um and I mean I just I I hope people realize that, you know, we're I think there's roughly uh, 400, maybe three to 400 agents in our entire state right now. So um, it's just a it's such a huge opportunity um, for us to, to, to get out and share the message. What when you talk to uh, when you talk to, to agents from other companies um, in full transparency, what are they saying about EXP, man? 
Uh, so a lot of people are curious. I had two calls today of just curiosity. Tell me about it. You know, they say, Matt, you were a diehard Remax guy. You, know, you never left for any other company. Why did you move? You know, what was it? And I tell them they need to do their research and learn each different incentive that's here. And I always tell them, what do you have when you're going? Five years, two years from now, I'll have shit six months man it's been six months and i have more that if i leave this company you know then i i've been awarded more things you know than i than it took in 17 years um and so i tell them to do their research on everything and make sure you understand it before you discount it right because there's a lot of people you know we as growing in the career there's times when you just you know you don't want to hear it yeah 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 i know your company's good i don't want to hear it i'm not moving Right. But again, I'd say uh, that one line, two things, actually. You owe it to your family because one day you're going to stop selling real estate. So you owe it to your family to sit back and evaluate this and see if this is better than the uh, you know trajectory that your business is, is going. And then second, we teach everybody every day to buy housing. Right. We tell them, you know, you don't want to rent, renting is, you know, worthless, you know, you don't get anything for it. Yet, what do we do as agents? We rent our franchise names, we rent the owner of the buildings, you know, space, all for what? In the end, what do we have? You know, when you compare that to this model, you know, with the agent, it's not ownership, you know, we're shareholders, but still, you're going to rent more than you can at any other brokerage. Yep. So what when you when you run into pushback, um, what what why do people why do you think people don't get it? What is it? Why do why don't people get it? And what is it that they don't get about EXP if you explain it to them and you're getting pushback? Yeah, I really haven't had much pushback other than people that um, are comfortable. You know, uh, maybe they don't need change, don't want change. Um, and are afraid of change, right? Everybody's afraid of change. Mm -hmm. You know, it took me, you know, six months plus to, to make the decision. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, I'd say that's the only limit limiting factor that I see is just people being closed minded to it and just saying, Yeah, yeah, it's not for me without really looking at it. But once people see it, man, if they watch a full video about it, and we can link some of the videos in, in this uh at the bottom at the end here. Um, you know. Watch, do yourself a favor and watch the whole thing. Be open to it. Watch it to the end. Don't listen to 10 minutes and then cut it off um, because you really need to, to sit back and look at it and see how it can help you. Yeah. And this company is growing at record pace. I mean, 200 plus agents a week. I got into the company. Um, God, it was, yeah, it was around 10,000 agents. Yeah. You now it's six months and, you know, another 5,000. So, so it's been insane. The growth has just been insane, man. And, and we feel like um, we feel like we just can't talk to enough people about it. Um, but I was especially interested in talking to you um, after connecting down at EXPCon, just because I felt like you did have a unique story to, uh, to, to tell. Uh, being at Remax for so many years and, and the relationships you'd built there, um, I just felt like would connect with somebody else in our audience. And so for that, I appreciate you sharing, brother. Yeah, man, no problem. I'm always glad to answer questions from anybody, especially in that Remax world. You know, that's where my experience was. And, you know, anybody evaluating opportunity. You know, I went through all the opportunities, you know, multiple brokerage, brokerage options and, and going independent. And at the end, you know, um, nothing compares to this one. Absolutely, man. So, Mr. Matt, how can people connect with you if they have questions about, uh, your transition from Remax or or joining EXP or just growing a real estate business? Um, just get me online. You know, I'm on Facebook, I'm on uh, Instagram, and you know, uh, we'll drop some links in here at the end. So, my main uh, website for the general public is MattSoldMyHome.com. Uh, just request info there. But um, yeah, I'm always available. All right, brother. Well, it's been 40 minutes of pure gold. Uh, thank you so much again for joining and sharing. And uh, I look forward to connecting with you again in the future, brother. Sounds great, man. All right, man. Good job, Matt.